First of all, I have some questions for my colleagues at the table. Does anyone here need to abstain from voting on any of the issues tonight? No. 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 Who is out to see any of the properties? No one? Okay, did any of you speak with anyone regarding the request before us tonight? No. 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 Anyone have any thoughts about the agenda for tonight? No one does. We will accept it as written. And regarding the minutes from the last meeting, anybody have any discussion, comments, proposals? Yeah, we need motion. Motions on each of those, I think. You want a motion on the first one, too? Yes, please. Very well. You are rolling together. You can bring right. them together, too. Go ahead, Tom. Motion to approve the agenda and the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I have zero. We're ready to go. Okay, we'll start off tonight uh, with Mr. Bueller. He's not here, but I'm representing him. All right, if you come, you can come up and have a chair. And we will listen to um, Paul give a little <laughs> overview of what we have before us. All right, thank, thank you, you Chair. Uh, this is a request for the three-part variance request. This property is at 3579 Van Lannan Road. It's on the far northeast side of Green Bay, uh, adjacent to the Bay of Green Bay. This is the property here, just north of Van Lannan Road at uh, Nicolay Drive. Uh, there are three variance requests that the applicants are uh, looking to do. And this is like this is an expansion of an attached garage here. So the garage itself, the footprint is larger than the principal dwelling. That's one variance. There is a shallow depth here to the uh, to the lot. So there's a rear guard setback issue. The setback would be 25 feet. It's much less than that. It's a dimension they're not meeting. And this drive here is wider than the code permits. Uh, typically, it's 25 feet at the property line, and it can flirt with 30 feet at the property line. These are some images of the looking north of uh, the existing home that's been remodeled recently, and then the uh, expanded garage, attached garage here. And this is a south view of the, of the property. Mainly in an area of single family homes, uh, this property was in the flood plan at one point, but was taken out last year uh, via a loan process. So those are the three requests before you tonight. You can pull that, that other building to the left of the star there, that's also part of this property? It is, yes. Okay. So there, there's already um, two extra Accessory buildings. Right. Uh, okay. Those, Those actually are existing, they're not part of the request. They don't actually affect it because what we're talking about is the attached garage. Correct. Whether if the garage were unattached, then they'd be playing back. Okay. Okay, sir, if you could explain um, how you are representing the applicant. My name is Larry Bednarski. I drew the plans. Okay. I'm the designer. Tiger Architect. Okay, are you with Home Remix? I am. I okay. am that company. You are You are them, all right? Yeah, I am them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I originally did the addition to the house, which is uh, an addition to the, uh, that would be to the east and also up. Okay. Now, uh, Ben wanted another garage, possibly unattached. And we agreed that while we could do that, there would still be issues because of how narrow the site is. It would be more advantageous for Ben to have it attached 
for obvious reasons, is for in, indoor walking during the winter, that type of thing. It would also keep the site as open as possible uh, to the west uh, because of neighbors, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. If we would put an unattached building out there, it was our opinion that it might get cluttered because of the house, plus another garage, plus his storage shed out to the east. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't look good, at least in our opinion. So we knew we had issues. No matter what we would do, we would have issues. So we decided, let's try and add on to the house. It would be the most beneficial thing we could do. The driveway is wider than normal. We felt that we would try and get this approved rather than have yet another separate uh, driveway on Van Landen Road. So we're trying to combine that mm -hmm. while keeping everything to the west open and inviting as possible. Okay. Um, Area-wise, it's over, we do that. It's over by 305 square feet when you include the other buildings on the site. It's not much, but it's still over. Mm -hmm. The setback would be an issue no matter what. Uh, it's tight, eight feet. Even an unattached garage would have a problem. So we figured Let's attach it and try and make it as smooth as possible. It's a big site, but unfortunately it's narrow. So you can't do much with it. So that was our reasoning. And we tried to make it as aesthetic as possible. If, the, um, if we deny the variance, what does the applicant propose to do? Maybe nothing, or maybe a very small garage but it wouldn't be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. He has some larger vehicles and he needs as much garage space as possible. Now we could reduce that garage size, you know, and maybe uh, overcome one variance of the 305 square feet overage, but it wouldn't do him as much good and so we felt this was about as tight as we could get. I guess that's about it in a nutshell. Okay. Other questions? Gentlemen? So they, to make sure I'm reading everything correctly, the, there's a current garage. Is that a two-car garage that's currently there? Yes. And so he's adding two more garage stalls? Yes. And expanding the already, already connected driveway that's there? Yes. Correct. So he'll have a four-car garage and a 36-foot Total, not 36 additional, 36 total. Total, not additional. Okay, and the use, the, <coughs> the, the need for doing this is? Well, it's residential. He has uh, several vehicles. He owns a uh, window, an auto window business. So he has some larger vehicles, not panel trucks or anything, but a, a full size pickup for his business and snow plowing the area here. So, still all residential in nature. So we tried to compact it as much as we could. Paul, could you explain the, um, the citation to the, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've explained these variances already, but it seems as if by the numbers they're putting there, that are they okay, or do we have to add up all of the accessory buildings, <coughs> and the sum total of their square feet can't be greater than the floor plan of the house? <laughs> There's always been some discussion in our department about that. I would interpret it to be all detached structures would be counted together. So even though they may be attached, they're still, it's the use of the property, it's still a garage space. So I would count that against the principal dwelling space. 
So I think it's reasonable to assume that they are over that. They're over the, that. The, the addition itself, they put it over that. Yeah. We did include the boathouse type thing. Yeah. I was trying to um, find a little bit on Green Bay what that zoning actually says. Was that 13620? <coughs> uh, maybe might be 615. <coughs> maybe you've already got it there, Paul. I'm, I'm just oh, they're looking for a I'm, I'm, I'm concerned for about the words and what they what they uh, require us to, say, to do. We've talked about this before. The in no case words that cause me some harm. Right. Have we looked at this property before? We have. Yes. So the this was uh, on the on the other side, the left side. The east side for floodplain issue. I I <coughs> believe that was. I think so, yeah. yeah. So there was a plan last year that the applicant came in, the property owner came in um, to expand the structure in order to do that for parking, he, right? Uh, for for the fill, he couldn't put the fill necessary fill around the structure to flood protect it. Oh. So we had to do some retaining walls and got a variance to oh, do that's that. The one. Yeah, but this wasn't the one with the parking, the snow pile. No, 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 it looks like it. It looks just like a step in it to get the loma. Got it. Okay. Right. Then I know what you're talking about. Right. Then he did another step and got it removed from the floodplain altogether based on the height of the existing structure. Copy that. Okay. So that, that's not an issue per se. The issue now is just the other three variances that are listed. And the boathouse that we're talking about is the one, if you go back to the satellite image, there's another structure all the way on the water. That is not, what, we're not dealing with that, correct? That's not part of the request, but it could factor into the calculation if you look at it from an accessory use perspective. Is right. that the boat house, the boat house that we're talking about, the 500, or is that the other structure in the middle? That's the structure in the middle. Yeah, I think boat houses together are 520. I think the two of them. Oh, covered. What, what's the rear rear yard on this? Oh. It should be 25 feet. They're proposing what, eight feet. I know, but where is it? On this, because this on this image, yeah, um, I think it's right here. Yeah. Where is it? That's the property line, yeah. and the setback is and the setback is here. I mean, the house itself is within the setback already because yeah. it's so narrow. I think it was, it was built that way. It oh. was built that yeah. way, right? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's already <laughs> out. It's already there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So we figure well. Yeah. So this isn't approaching anymore. It's just lining up with the existing footprint. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, the need for the 36 feet, um, I mean, you could do geometry on that and you could, ex you know, make it less and still function to every garage opening. Is there any... We uh, could. Could I go up there, please? Sure. No, go right ahead. All right. We thought of... Uh, I think maybe you're you're thinking about maybe taking this right and right. then bending it at some point. And bending it. But I was told, or at least it was my uh, <laughs> understanding that you can't approach on an angle. Right. So we've got certain specs about what driveways look like, so they're all pretty much uniform. So that would be a non traditional type driveway. So again, because a lot of so shallow, he really doesn't have a lot of driveway depth, so to speak, but the depth is, comes in this right of way almost. So ideally at the property line, which I think is this line here. That's the property. Yeah, the max width should only be 25 feet. Okay. So and that kind of stuck. Any, yeah, any sort of taper that would have to go symmetrically mm -hmm. away from that to it 30 feet. Just never yeah, it's just, okay. I mean, so that, that's Kind of made the hardship of, <coughs> of the lot itself. Uh, we tried. We looked at it. Yeah. I don't know what else to do. Right. <laughs> it's, it's the geometry. You just can't. Right. It's so shallow. You just can't make it work. Paul, well, where, where if we, let's say we take a very liberal reading of the in no case ordinance. And just, just for the benefit of everyone, it says, in no case shall the total floor area of an attached garage, carport, 
or other accessory structure exceed the ground floor area of the principal building located on the same lot. If we take a fairly liberal interpretation of that, which would be not the same one you took. Uh, what other concerns do we have with all those regarding other issues in Table 6-4 and uh, some of those? I'm just wondering if a, even a liberal interpretation leaves them needing other variances. I mean, they will have, we've already got three structures that are basically yeah. accessory. If we, took, if we take that reading of a fairly in liberal interpretation, is that all that's needing to matter here? Besides those other two variances, which I'm prepared to. I, I guess it depends if you want to take that liberal interpretation now. I mean, that, that could be an item that we could discuss between the staff and the board at a later date, certainly. I mean, our, our interpretation has been pretty consistent through the years on that. Um, right. But it could warrant uh, an interpretation. I mean, the board has that ability to provide that interpretation ultimately. I do it as a zoning administrator, but that's just staff. I mean, the board could take that to another level. But um, I'd actually like to hear Paul's take on that <coughs> section of the code relative to this <coughs> one more time. I know you've explained it in the past, but if we sure. just walk through it with this relative to the, the, the area piece of it. Yeah, sure. So. Um, so looking at the older photo, there's a, there's a principal dwelling here that has an attached garage. There are two detached structures as well, a garage or a shed or a boathouse or whatever it might be. So now there's a remodeled structure, there's an addition being proposed. So the way we would look at that code section is that we would look at the use of the space that's uh, under consideration, the accessory use. So even though the garage is attached to the principal use, we wouldn't consider that part of the dwelling space. It is technically, but it's, it's an accessory use space. So we, we would calculate that differently. So physically the garage space, the boathouse, and the shed or whatever it might be would be counted separately under one total and then compared to the principal footprint of the building. And is that gap 305 feet or is it bigger than that because I see the boathouse but I don't see the shed? He thought the 520 was the sum was of inclusive the I think it's those two together, I think, yeah. I believe so. What, what is that structure there? It's just storage. It's like it's got... A it's a storage. What, do you know what, like, use is of there? Uh, he can store, uh, well, he stores anything in there. It's like a, a plow, uh, whatever equipment he has a lawn tractor okay. and there is yeah there's a driveway to it but he stores just about anything in there to keep his present garage as open as possible let's see so <coughs> no I'm so sorry were you done yeah yeah I, that's all I, I think the long and short of it is that we want to see the principal dwelling be the, the bigger structure or appearance on the lot, not the accessory uses, which we know we need accessory uses. People have a lot of vehicles and toys and stuff, but again, the principal use of the dwelling should dominate the lot, so to speak. And when you do those measurements, are you measuring the entire floor area of each structure, or is it just the footprint area? Just the footprint. So that's another point of contention in our office, if you have a two-story building and you're counting both floors, why well, count <coughs> the footprint of the building itself? Okay. Right. I went through that exercise yeah. myself, <laughs> and if we could do the second floor, then it's not I wouldn't be here for right. that one. Right. Right. <laughs> From a design perspective, the back of the building that encroaches on the setback and adds additional square footage to the, the property, um, the back end of it go to the aerial? Is it, uh, back one more? Yeah, so that little nub that jots off off the back, is there a reason why that doesn't just come straight back? Because again, that's additional square footage that would reduce the 305 square feet need. What nub? The little ed part that pops out the top there, so right here. That so nub. it's a, yep, exactly. If we had to reduce it, we could. Uh, we're still, you know, where you come out, 
we're still very close to the well not necessarily the setback like to me just so we're talking out loud the, the set I mean <laughs> there's not much you can do with this lot in terms of building it I'm just trying no. to the, the 305 I think is what we're all keying in on you know and, and is there is there a hardship here you know is there other solutions that can get us closer to not being you know in that in that violation there and so there's no measurements that I can read again I don't read these really as quick as some other people but if you if you took that off how many feet do you get back so if I have that does that make sense if you just came straight down if that get you another 150 back and at that point do we care if you get 150 back it's 150 over well let's see it would be 17 foot times uh, roughly six 17 times 6, 42. 102. 500, yeah. So if that comes flush off, it's 102. If now we're at went straight, straight back. Continue that angle, you mean? So we're at 200 now. But and then to the board, my question would be, you know, 200 versus 300, do we care? If we're, if we're going to approve. And that, that's the question I would ask us to discuss when we're done with the questions. Yeah. That's the only piece for me is about that, that part of the hardship. The, uh, just help me remember all the, the, the um, retaining walls and this stuff. That's all actually on the, the bay short side of the house, right? right. That was, that's all separate. Because that's yes. where the, the, the it slopes there's down a, to the left. There's a gray change yeah. towards the bay. Yeah. Yeah. The west side is quite level, actually. I don't know. <coughs> is that one lot? Is there any plans at all to subdivide that or is it To my knowledge, no. I think he wants to keep the whole lot as it is, which is why we wanted to keep the, the right side or the west as open and clean as possible. Well, especially after you put the little thing on the top. To yeah. The water <laughs> what, what is the property to the south? That wooded adjacent is that a north? Well, what's your direction? That's north, right? This one? Yeah, yeah. Everything is north on the photos. Oh, okay. I got to switch from kind of like that. So to the north. So what is that property? It looks just wooded. Is, is that privately owned or is that? Yes. So it that could, could be developed. It could be, sure. I want to hear uh, what the alderman has to say. I just, I am very supportive of, of this. I, I think that I, I, I would hope if you're going to approve it, I don't know that that hundred is makes that big of a difference. But you know, you guys decide. Mm -hmm. You guys decide. It's a really tough lot, isn't it? Oh yeah. It is. I mean, uh, there, there's got to be some variance, no matter what, because you're already. In Violation. It, oh, yeah. We knew that. I mean, without even starting the garage, right. you know. Right. Yeah. I had an item on traffic. I'm sorry, and so I finished that, and then I quickly came up here. But okay. So I would have, have, been have any of the neighbors spoken Nobody's about this with you? Mm -hmm. Okay. We are trying to blend it in with the house, appearance-wise, as well as we can. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I, I, um, I don't hear any more discussion from up here, so if you could have a seat, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody wish to speak uh, otherwise for or against this property? Is variance being requested? Good. Thank you for reminding me, Tommy. You're welcome. Tommy's here to remind me of lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> All right. The ordinance was written with an or, but I buy what you're saying. Otherwise, you could put a whole bunch of six by six buildings on the lot and never yeah. trigger that part of the ordinance. Right. I mean, there is some interpretation that goes on. Sure. I understand the principal dwelling part. We've talked about this before, and I don't want to drag us into my little um, problem with what this says. That's not supposed to be my problem anyway. So. <laughs> We're stuck with the words that say, in no case shall a total floor area of an attached garage car park, et cetera, et cetera. And in no case, 
says to me there's no no discussion. So I would vote against this. I would only vote against. Just I'll give you enough. The variance regarding the uh, artillery structure. The other ones you're okay with, right? I'm, I'm okay with the other ones. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Uh, uh, no, I'm in the okay. same boat. If there is a way to make that dark addition fit and make that 305 go to zero, right, I would be, I would approve the whole thing. Yep, exactly. Or, I mean, again, depending on what the property owner wants to do, there's the storage shed off the left if that's then the garage would work probably. That's true. Right. That's true. So, but I, I agree, that's kind of where I'm leaning to. So yes on the two, but the one, I think there's a, there's discussion. The one where Greg, do you have any? Yeah, against, uh, against the uh, size. The other two, I think. Yeah. No, and I can definitely see, uh, my reasoning on the, on the driveway is, there's already a driveway there, and, but it, it wouldn't be considered unsightly in any form. But the size does bother me, and uh, I suspect we may be all in agreement that uh, two of the three variances are ones we can grant, but there's one. Can I have a, ask a question? I heard, I think, somebody say that um, if something else went away, then this one might be okay. Well, sh should we, before you make a final decision, should we put it to the homeowner to, you know, the worst of the evils here? What, you know, what would you be most willing to give up before you make your, because once you make your decision, it's Right, over. then it's kind of locked in for a while, yeah. Yeah. Well, once we, if we were to vote the way we talked about it up here, um, there are a number of ways that the own homeowner can then meet the requirements of that ordinance. He doesn't need to have us approve some other alternative from here. Oh. In other words, if he says, my gosh, I really want that garage, okay. but I'm willing to throw away 305 square feet of other auxiliary buildings that still that exist now, then fine. There's, then he wouldn't need a variance on that in the first place. Oh. So we could work with staff to yeah. come up with some alternatives. I guess. Yeah. We're saying that is that we vote the way it looks like we're going. You can't have all those structures and the bigger garage. Just because that is exact, the law just says that. Yep. Right? I mean, to us, like, that's our interpretation. Yeah. We're because sometimes you can do an appeal, right? You can grant a variance. Well, that's what we're here for. <laughs> right. But you're saying in this particular case, you just can't? Yes. In my, in my interpretation, in no case shall is the direction from you guys to us that there's not a lot of flexibility allowed mm. to us in that case. And we can't even take this to council, right? Because this is that once it's here. Yep. We can talk about it. So well, you, you have some thoughts. Yeah, I've got some thoughts. Of course, I've got some thoughts. You know, different than everything, but um, Good. yeah, I think just addressing the three points, my comments would be, um, you know, I think that the, the there's no way you can elegantly do the driveway if you can only change the width in the setback. So you're kind of stuck with a wider driveway if you're going to allow it for the extra garage footprint. Um, and I don't think that's terrible. Um, I think that um, I, I I think there's something happening here to 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 get a little extra wiggle room in between the existing garage and the new proposed garage because there's kind of like a triangular wedge. If you imagine the floor plan, or if you look at the floor plan later in the packet, that's new space in a sense. And I don't know if that happens to be 300 square five square feet or not, but um, uh, but the tilting of this addition, you know, is, you know, maybe pretty, you know, prettier than squaring it and just running the building longer. But, um, you know, that, that might actually cut some of that square footage off as well if this thing were just squared to the abutting the, uh, the you know, the additional garage, the existing garage. I don't know. And then shaving some of it, maybe you get some, some, some width. There's some s s square footage savings there. But the bottom line for me is 
I'm not sure in the big picture sense that the the floor area calculation at, based on footprint is adequately giving us the tools we need or you need to think about building mass and the proportions of the structures on the property, which I think is what it's trying to get to in some mm -hmm. respect. Um, you know, because if this were a three-story house, you know, um, and it's well, it's practically that, right? It's got a it's got a little extra up on top there on that that uh, um, cupola. So, I mean, if you if the whole house was that size, we'd still be talking about the same calculations in terms of the area of the footprints of these buildings. But there would be no way anybody in the room would look at that and go, "Oh my gosh, that garage makes." Now is is making too much, you know, presence relative to the to the primary structure. So I do think we should take you up on your offer sometime, Paul, and talk about that. And maybe you know, maybe there should be a zoning tweak to to to, to give some for instances or something like that relative to that because I, I I think it ties our hands a little bit sometimes on stuff that might otherwise seem logical. Looking at this picture of of the front of this this building, I don't see a gross violation in aesthetics and other things like that, which is part of what the zoning's supposed to do for us. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to prevent people from building really ugly stuff that's an eyesore in the neighborhood, right? And so from that perspective, I actually don't have a problem with the variance on the size, because I think this works. The fact that we've got four garage stalls, a shed that looks more like a garage and has some commercial activity going on it, and a boathouse. That's maybe another potato to be talking about in terms of what's actually going on there. But just from that standpoint, I actually could support all three of these variants requests. Okay. That's, you're right, but, but my concern <laughs> is that <laughs> that fucking no apple case. Gets you a no case. Okay. So what do I have to do to bring a change forward? Can we, can we, should we hold this? I can, I can uh, bring a proposal to council. Uh, it would literally take weeks for that to get through plan commission and back through council. Um, based on the current schedule, it could be June. <laughs> I mean, it would take weeks to get that accomplished. Yeah. I mean, in the in the interim, I'd certainly jump on with a yes vote on the the other two variances that the three of you seem comfortable with, um, and maybe we just don't act on the third request and and table that and see if they want to come back with a different with a variation plan. To your point, yeah. yeah. Or are you are you saying well, whatever they want I to want to make sure that I understand what your positioning is is that more looking at the ordinance or them coming up with a variation that no I'm just saying if I would I'd be happy to move to approve the variances as requested tonight but I understand that you guys would vote no on that and we don't want to tie, necessarily tie their hands completely by rejecting all of this so um, I think that um, you know, if you're willing to, if you are all willing to say yes to the two requests about the encroachment on the setbacks and the width of the driveway, um, why don't we make a motion to approve those and not take any action on the request for the size variance? And maybe they can pull a rabbit out of their hat. Maybe they can't, but that's their business. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Does it come back here, or it doesn't come if, back? Here? If it needs to, it does. You know, but, but you know, if we say no, the same thing happens anyway. Right? Not necessarily. No. 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 What 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 Noel is saying is, let's say, mm. what we're what I was saying originally was 305. That's it. You can come back with getting rid of 305 square feet. You're good. Yes. You, but then you don't need a variance. What Noel is saying, I think, is that. Maybe they've got a better idea. They may come back with something that's over a hundred over, but they've done something else that leads Reduced us it. to think that there's been some effort made to try to accommodate the ordinance. So maybe sure you would do yes later, but yeah. we yeah. don't we don't act on it. We don't now act on it. We're not so shutting them down for a year. Yep. It's over. Yeah, my only thought I I'm fine with that, and I would vote that way. My only thought on that is going back to kind of intended use right can the land can you do what you're trying to accomplish with with the, the, the lands intended and there's a solution here it's it's not a it's not a need it's it's a want and you guys very much know how I feel about accessory structures for toys right and, and it's not um, a hardship in that way and there's a solution for a three-car garage that's totally possible that reduces all of the variances 
you know, in terms of the width of the, gra the driveway, would go down if there wasn't a fourth garage. Right. You could reduce the back end of it a little bit. To your point, with the pizza pie slice, it's aesthetically pleasing and it kind of rolls in really nice and I think it's a great design, but if you flattened it, you know, yeah. does the driveway then get longer, but at least that part is reduced. So I, I part of our new application is, you know, are there alternatives that you try and why are you rejecting those? And for me to get to that point, I would think you need to see that. Yeah, can we just talk through some of those alternatives and why yes or no? And that might lend itself towards a little bit of that because I, I do think we can get a lot closer to being in compliance versus where we currently are. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I'd be willing to make a motion to try and capture what I was saying and see, see what happens. Sure, let's, let's see what we can come up with. Um, so I move that we. Um, approve or grant the variance with respect to the max driveway width um, and the uh, um, and the uh, uh, setbacks the rear yard setback um, and uh, and not take action at this time on the square footage of accessory space um, and communicate to the petitioner that we're willing to hear other proposals on that in the future if they so choose I second okay to the applicant, do you understand where we come on this? Not totally. I understand the three variances. You've got two. It, it, I it understand works. you're approving two, or we may approve. We may two. approve two. The third one. Are you thinking that we can reduce the garage space to get as close as possible to the 305 feet, even if we don't quite meet it? Or look at other options, or look at that other accessory building, or, or you know. Yeah, they're not going to give, can't give you an answer right now. I'm just trying know. to get, but yeah, but yeah. there's a, a little. A little bit. As the alderman explains, there's a limit to how far we're going to go to try to fix this for you mm -hmm. at the table. But this, uh, what this, if we go the way we're proposing to go, you still have an out to come back because we aren't taking any action on the on the accessory structure ordinance. We're just giving the variance on the back and on the on the drive. <coughs> if you come up with something that takes it down past 309 feet or whatever that number was that you're over, you don't need a variance anyway. If you can do something that makes it, I shouldn't say makes it look, but it gives us the sense that there's been a good faith effort on your part to come up with something that comes closer to meeting the ordinance. That'll give us a little more flexibility on feeling how we interpret that, that ordinance. Okay, I understand that. Thank you. Uh, then what's the vehicle for the process? Do I submit drawings to Paul? Yep. And then we meet again? Yeah, you don't have to file again. But... We can talk at staff level and see what you come All up right, with. I'll and contact you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion made and seconded. Do we need further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. You have two out of the three <coughs> with the third up in the air. Two out of three ain't bad. Like you saw <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Right, we uh, have Mr. Phillips next. Yeah. Here. I'm his wife. Hi. Hi. Yes. Is Alderman Nicholson here? No. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I understood all the players. And by the way, so I, Tommy doesn't have to remind me again. Huh. Is there anybody oh, so here that wishes to speak for or against the, the Phillips variance request? You do. Okay, we'll get to you, sir. Not yet, but want to hear how this goes. So what we'll first do is hear staff's uh, explanation of what you're uh, planning to do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a request for variance at 2089 Fern Lane, uh, east side property, uh, northwest corner of Fern and Bader Street here, uh, a low density residential property, single family home. What they're looking at doing is expanding the driveway, the existing driveway here into the corner side yard setback. This is uh, supplied by the applicant. This kind of basically shows a 12 by 20 foot parking area. They'd like to add to the uh, outside edge of the garage. Uh, another view looking northeast. Uh, again, another view from the applicant. 
Um, and this is a street view perspective of, again, uh, expanding the existing driveway coming around here, about 12 feet wide, 20 feet deep along the garage to, uh, to create that parking pad. Uh, basically, there is a corner side yard setback of 15 feet. They're encroaching into that setback, and that's why the balance is. How far yeah. is that encroachment? I don't know if that's super clear. Um, I think it's approximately about half, but I think I got about six feet. Okay. So I'm trying to get, you know, another six feet on that side. I don't have, I don't know the exact. It would be 50 feet in from the dotted line. Is that the point? Uh, from the, uh, no, from the solid line. <coughs> 15, 15 feet in here. Okay, so it's 15 feet back. Well, that's already the front. Okay. I think I all right, but anyway, the applicant is uh, suggesting that he needs six feet of variance. Um, yeah. Because you're approaching for six feet into the IDS. Okay. okay, if you could uh, explain um, what, you want your case and your reasoning and your okay. justification. Well, it's it's just that we, we kind of need some more parking space. We have a trailer that we would keep currently keep in the garage, and we would like to possibly put it on the side there so we can get our car in the garage. So we have two cars in the garage. Also, um, when we hook up the trailer, it's so one I use for, for a business that we own. When we hook up the trailer, we have it outside of the garage. It, uh, it's the length of the trailer in the garage. We're actually having it encroach into the, across the sidewalk and into the road in order to hook this whole thing up. And so it's kind of a safety issue too that we're kind of looking for too. Uh, uh, people coming around um, Bader Street. Yeah, if you see that corner there, there's they come whipping around, around there. there. Corner. And yeah. we're lower than the people next door to us, so when, so you can't, so we wouldn't be blocking any traffic view. So you see, they installed a six foot fence, mm -hmm. and we are about how much lower do you think we are than them? Probably not. Probably significant, probably about six feet. About, about six feet. So seriously, from our front sidewalk looking to the east, I think that is, we are literally 12 feet lower than that fence. So I mean, from the top of that fence. So any cars approaching that corner, um, their view is obstructed from that fence more than it would be from any vehicle or trailer, basically our, our little utility trailer than, um, than anything. That's a big slope, as you can see. Okay. Questions for the applicant? Um, just a quick one. Um, the form you filled out is blank in terms of what you were going to impact the vari list variances required. I just want to make sure what's listed on here is what you intend. Just to make sure. Okay. Is that, is that right? Um, I'm sorry. Well, you, the handwritten form you filled out yes. left it blank as far as what codes and what no. you need a variance for. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's okay. I just want to make sure it's it's clear in what's on the agenda. That's what you're asking. Yeah, we're okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. I just want to make sure. Okay. Um, there are further, no further questions for the applicant. Uh, if you could have a seat. Yeah. Sir, I believe you wish to speak and um, come back. Yes. Can you get a motion over the floor, please? Oh, uh, oh that'd be a good idea, wouldn't motion it? Motion to open the floor for discussion. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hello. Hello. My name is Perry Ankerson. I live at 511 Bader Street. <coughs> Where you go to that other picture. I, in fact, let me hand this off. This is a picture right from our front door of the property in question, which was taken just the other day. And, uh, I bought five. Thank you. You're, you're so across the street. Got across it. the street, you can see the see the property. Go back to the um, that one. Nah, not that one. There's another one where it shows that. I'm 
at a different angle, mm -hmm. but I'm directly across. That picture was taken right out of my front door, okay, looking down on the property. And um, I am obviously opposed to this uh, um, for a, a few reasons. Um, number one, uh, I noticed the, pro the uh, announcement that I got talked about the variance of the property owner must show unnecessary hardship caused by the or ordinance. And just hearing, I couldn't hear a lot of um, hardship or unnecessary hardship. If uh, they need a place to store their trailer, there's plenty of places where you can rent space at, um, at these rental places that store equipment and store household furnitures and cars and whatever. So, and imagine that they were going to park the car there, wasn't going to park the trailer there, but there's no way to stop them from parking their trailer on that piece of concrete that's sitting out there. Um, that's the picture. Again, a little different angle, but that's, that's, that's what we see from our house. The other thing uh, that probably bothers me more than anything else is uh, my wife and I are both in our 70s, uh, and at some point in time, we're going to begin to probably have to downsize our property. And our property is one of the most valuable assets that we have. And to um, put that in is uh, certainly not going to add value to our property in any way that I can see, but it certainly um, sets up the potential for reducing the value of our property as a result of having what I consider to be an eyesore. Um, and that's basically my issue with this uh, with this uh, proposed variance. Any questions? Okay, sir. If you could have a seat. Thank you very much. If you wish to speak, ma'am. I do. Um, my name is Heather Styler. I am opposed to this. Which one is your property? Um, my parents live directly behind them, and I live on the corner of Fern and St. Bernard Drive. Okay. I've also lived on Bader Street, um, on, the, uh, on the other, where Mom and Dad live, right next to them, down the street on the block, on the corner. So I have been in the same situation um, the Phillips have been in. This is just my concern for opposing it. The utility trailer is an enclosed-in trailer, um, so it's not like it's a trailer that just has size. It's a totally enclosed-in trailer. My biggest thing is I travel that Fern Road 20 times a day. You have the fire hydrant there that's on the road. I think that that's a concern. Could you so identify where that fire hydrant yep, is? Yep, absolutely. It's right here. So okay. even though you would spend this out, you still have the fire hydrant there. I think that's a safety issue. Um, also, St. Bernard's Church and the school is right there. Every day, 90% of that traffic, the main traffic is on Fern. All the buses come up and down from there. I know um, my mother just put that fence up. You know, we had to <coughs> take consideration to see for traffic. Um, like I said, I lived on a corner. It's the same as uh, the Phillips did. Um, and I was in the same situation because I had a construction business and I wanted to put my um, enclosed and trailer on this side and obviously I couldn't do that. Um, I got denied for it for the same reason. I think if it's an enclosed and trailer, you're not gonna see. You have kids constantly going to Preble. Um, the buses, they line up. Um, I live right on the corner where that red car is to your left and even coming out of there and coming up, it's a constant, you know, you can see that. Um, this past summer, um, where the white van is, somebody actually went through my mom and dad's, um, she came off of Bader Street, I don't know if she fell asleep at the wheel or what, but she almost went through, if my mom didn't have her trailer there and that swing there with those poles, she would have went through the Phillips's home, but instead they went through my mom and dad's garage. Thank God the lady was okay. So I think that's just all an issue on that corner. I think it's an eyesore. Um, I just safety reasons. I'm looking at the school, I'm looking at the kids, I'm looking at that fire hydrant. Um, my parents are older, that's another concern. You know, I want to make sure their safety if something would happen, you know, that the, the fire trucks can get to the hydrant, you know. Um, so those are my concerns. Okay. You know, being in, living in, you know, 
My mom's been in this neighborhood and in that house for over 50 plus years, and fortunately, me 49. <laughs> so I just, I just think it, I just oppose it for those reasons and safety reasons for kids and school and the fire safety does right there with the hydrant. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak for or against uh, the proposal here? Okay. Would note that we, you know, we did get another document, another letter too from the Jason property owners in opposition to this. Yes. So, gentlemen, what's uh, what are your thoughts? I don't know it's good. We have neighbors in this uh, corner lot and. The view and the obstruction at the school, we got kids around and we got the neighbors. Um, I just think it's um, there's not really a hardship. Right. So right. there's no real need for this. So I would go no. Yes, I would too. For similar reasons I believe it is an eyesore. It's not a, not an appropriate use of of uh, that piece of property at that point. No Paul, or, uh, sorry, go ahead. I thought you were going to go ahead. Paul, go ahead. if use case, how it's being used. And uh, you're allowed, again, reminding myself, uh, it's been a while, so you can put, you can build a, a spot, a parking spot on the side of your house, correct? Sure. As long as it goes all the way to the back of the house, correct? Is that right? You won't have to go to the back of the house, it just would have to be outside of the setback area. So you can widen your driveway any distance <coughs> you want, but there are setbacks that then kick in where you can't encroach into. And that's what's happening here. But right. if their setback wasn't there, they have every right to build uh, th this proposed design. They would. I mean, if they're in more of a uh, interior lot, that might be a different story. If they had enough width, they could do something like that. Sure. Correct. So in a way, the hardship of the lot per per prohibits them from expanding their property in terms of uses, correct? You could maybe say that, or you could consider it self-imposed as well. Well, is it self-imposed? <laughs> the fact that sometimes people come in, right, and, I, oh, I built a fence, and I didn't know, so I, I self-imposed myself. That's, that's how I read that, right? It's like people that come in, they've done a fence, we find them, and we're like, well, but I didn't know. That's a self-imposed hardship. That's not... That's the whole point. People come all the time and they're asking variances for what they want to do and their property has limitations that allow them to do things, right? right? So that's not self-imposed, that's just getting a variance. But the only, I, I'm for okay, it. It's a philosophical question. What's that? Well, I, I'm, I'm just trying to get in, kind of get into our why a little bit. Because the hardship sometimes we always go, and I was reading it while we were talking, the hardship is, is really comes down to the property. That's it. So expanding the use of the property is limited by the lot of the property. The hardship is their need to comply. To, to have the thing on the side of the house to park. That's how, how much you perceive that to be a hardship. That is the, that's the rationality. No, that's kind of the opposite of what we went through. So from a code perspective, they're complying for parking. They need two spaces. They've got four parking spaces here. So there's not like a, a limited parking issue here or a number of issue. They have sufficient parking to meet the need. I suppose if they didn't have the physical area, that might be a different story. But I mean, this is just simply an expansion. Okay. You're Can we have a question here? Yes, you may ask a question. Well, first off, the person that just talked, she does not live on the corner. She lives one in from that corner. She does not live on the corner of Bader and uh, on the corner of um, Fern well, and St. No, we'll, we'll stipulate that she has an interest based okay. on her living here. Okay. We could also put our trailer on our driveway all the time. And it would still look the same as if we put our trailer next to our our, our concern is more a safety issue when I'm backing the truck in and we're coming back from a gig because we do we do DJ and karaoke for for um, weddings for and weddings and such 
when I back the rig in, I am in the truck and I am in the middle of, I'm in the road on Fern. People are whipping around the corner from Bader onto Fern and I'm a sitting duck. And we, and he's trying desperately to get the trailer unhooked. I could leave that trailer right on the driveway legally and it would be the same eyesore if it was on the front of the house or if it was on the side. Now if I could get that trailer up a little bit along the side of the house so he could unhook it, my safety would not be in jeopardy, nor would that look any different than if it was sitting on the driveway. I got some thoughts. Yeah. They're different from everybody else's. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, I've, got a, I've got a couple of concerns about the petition in that there is nothing written in the petition about the variances required to implement the plan. I know we talked, you clarified that there's there, what they were asking for was captured in the agenda, but the, the you know, it's an incomplete application. Um, the unique physical characteristics of the property, uh, which prevent them from complying with the zoning ordinances, isn't really made as a case um, in the application. And I think, um, you know, we talked, Tommy, you mentioned before too, it's like, what are the options, what are the alternatives? And mm -hmm. there's no discussion of that sort of thing and why complying is a hardship. Like, I have to, I have to hang out in the kill zone on Fern, you know, right. um, trying to park. Those sorts of things I would prefer to see addressed by the petitioner in a comprehensive manner in these applications so that we can understand what, you know, what's going on. Yeah. Um, and the fact that there's blank sections in this, I'm really troubled by that and not likely to support the petition. In fact, would probably be proposed to table it. The other thing is there's lots of talk about the view and stuff and, and, and the, the need for a setback variance. But there's no dimensions given in any of the material that we've got that can show us exactly what that distance is. I, I don't see, you know, a, a, an image here that says, okay, this is how wide that pad is going to be relative to the setback line. Is it 15 foot off the corner pole? Mm -hmm. You know, I can see that, that last image we've got in the packet, which has got the plat, the, the, the plat, that one there. You know, that dashed line is eight feet off of the, um, off of the, the, the you know the the solid line well you double that that's yeah. 16 feet well maybe this thing fits in there as it is I don't know you know it almost looks like if that's if that's anywhere near to scale at 12 foot there maybe they've got enough space to to, to, to pour the slab and they don't need any uh, variance and I think that's something especially given the you know the opposition of the neighbors they might want to have a better handle on before we act on this one way or another I think also and I would be inclined to, to say if that we ever were in a position, I'd want to have a conversation about fencing or other things like that that might, you know, obscure the, the, the unsightliness of something. But I, I'm not going to vote to support this. If the petitioners want to keep advancing it, I'll vote to deny it just because I think it's an incomplete application. Um, but I would propose as an alternative that we just table it um, until maybe they want to complete the application and provide some more detail and clarity. Okay, so your your um, concern is principally a procedural one that we we're not given sufficient information in the format that we had requested. Yeah, and it, well, it, or what they provided doesn't adequately make the case, and I would guess I'd give them the benefit of the doubt in terms of putting some of that together and letting us take a look at it another time. But um, as as it's presented, I either got to vote no or, or I got to vote um, or I got or I got a motion to table it. Presumably, the inspector determined based on some set of measurements he was uh, shown that there was a variance required, right? Right, and many times uh, we have staff that fill in that category for the applicant, right or wrong, because maybe they're not familiar with the code or the exact code section. So, I mean, I simply glean from the site plan that they had an issue with the setback. So, um, we don't necessarily grade the applications when they come in. I mean, I could maybe agree that it's somewhat incomplete because there are some blanks. But we don't judge the applications necessarily. I mean, I think Noel's right in the sense if something's inadequate, I think you have a right to ask for additional more details. details. Right. I think from my perspective, you know, I understand the table, which you're requesting, Noel, but unlike the last one, I don't envision a scenario where I would... Where you'd say... This I would say, you know, this is going to change my mind. Yeah. So... Yeah, and recognizing that the petitioner could just pave up to 15 feet off of the street and right. 
not need a variance and not at all. Not need a variance at all. If that's enough to get their trailer on, they get their trailer there. Right. So may I ask everybody to kind of go back to the three-step test. If it's no on any one of those three, it fails, right? And so unique property limitation, unnecessary hardship, and the protection of public interest. Just for my recalibration, what it says in here is harm the public interest nor undermine the purpose of the ordinance. The public interest includes the interest of the public at large, not just those nearby property owners, right? So is part of our process too is if there's a- There's people uh, saying that it will harm the in public interest. Right, that, that is, we're here to judge, hey, there's, you know, there's more community sure. work that needs to be done as well. So in that one case, like, we might disagree about the interpretation of unnecessary hardship, but in, in this case, based on the three-step program, number three, you know, that's where I'm, I, to finish where I was at before, number three I'm a little concerned about, which is protection of public interest. There's more work to be done with the neighbors to kind of come up with a, a solution for safety or conversations that need to happen within the neighborhood so we're not being the judge and jury for the neighborhood and stuff. So that, that is why I'm leaning towards no, <coughs> that three-step test, kind of getting back to those basics of what we're supposed to do. And that number three is kind of where I'm I'm having to start though that we're not ready for it. So whether we table we saying no, right now it, in my opinion it's failing because of that one. Well if you're willing to entertain a motion, Mr. Chairman, I, I think I might make one even though it might fail. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I would move that we table this and ask the petitioner to provide more detail, including more precise measurements of what they're looking to do and, and how that relates to the side yard to the side yard setback. And to complete the application with more detail, I would I would second that. Yeah, we have a motion made and seconded. Does everybody here on the table understand what the staff believe they interpret that correct? That they understand what Noel is proposed? Yes. For clarification, if this motion fails, we still need to act on the ordinance, right. correct? Okay. Right. So there's a second motion. Good. Okay. 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 We have a motion before us, uh, made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. All right. That's where we are. You got your motion is passed. Okay. Uh, the thing popped up and went away so fast I didn't push it back. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if I know if I'm interpreting this correctly, you're saying that if I can find that I actually can fit this within the uh, within the parameters of the uh, setbacks that I don't need your approval to go ahead and do this correct well I'm just saying it I guess we're just saying if you're well I, I ask know for it. us for a variance we need I need we need more information right. than you're giving yes. us. and that's my failing because I I really don't know what I'm doing in this, in this situation I'm just trying to convey to you what I wanted to do and I would give us some information from the building inspector that that I did I was I had some room there but not quite enough room maybe and he wasn't 100% sure. When I initially proposed this, probably a year ago, he flat out told me, "No, know that I would have to get a variance." And then when I went for the variance, he kind of fudged, hedged on that, and said, "You may not even need a variance." It's like, well, I said, "Well, I, you know, maybe I should just apply for it anyway, just because." Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just be. I just want to follow the right direction. You know, no, right and I think steps. the good thing that Noel did is he gave you gave gave you an out. Right, so you have time to work on some of that stuff and then yeah. work with the neighbors, kind of maybe suss out some of that public interest. Yeah. See if you can work on some of that. Because again, what we're supposed to vote on is three steps, hardship, property limitations, and public interest. Okay. Whether they're represented or not, we have to consider that as a whole. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. that I, I'm saying that's why I kind of voted personally. Yeah, and if we force that tonight, you probably get denied, so. Correct. Correct, this, this Correct. happens a lot yeah. where we we're at the point where we're going to give you another shot. And okay. if you insist on having us make a decision tonight, you may no, not no, like no, 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 no. Well. I, I'm just trying to understand what you're what you're saying, because I I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit more like after looking at the um, that 15 feet, I'm starting to think I've got plenty of room to actually do this. And so if you do, then uh, then we're I suspect you don't need to come to talk to us. Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But you might want you, to talk to you your still neighbors. got neighbors' <laughs> concerns, and we're not here to pass judgment on right, right. those types of things. Yes, I'm familiar with my neighbor concerns. So anyway, mm -hmm. that's, very that's, that's where you that's where you are, sir. You've got a chance to come back. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, we've taken no action, but we have not started the clock. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Can I just ask one quick question? Yes. <coughs> About the trailer. I mean, is it a 
pro I don't know if it's, is it legal to park a boat in your driveway, a trailer in your driveway, things like, is that, is that a, because I never see anybody ever do that, and I oh. don't come, come. Sure, as long as it's on a legal driveway, it's permitted, yes. It's legal to just park If it's parked on a driveway that's approved, it is, yes. And isn't there something about a commercially labeled vehicle as well? Right. I mean, we're talking just domestic vehicles. There's RVs, there's camp, there's uh, boats, there's other things that apply as well. There's different requirements. But basically, you can, you can park anything pretty much on the driveway. So a trailer would be permitted. That's okay. So if they right. extend the driveway, then that's considered a driveway? Yes, no? yeah, you're right. And they can, they can park a, a trailer or a boat or whatever else on there. All right, we'll move along. Larry and Darlene Sturks. I hope I pronounced that correctly. If I have not, yeah, I apologize. Sure. I note that Mr. Stoyer's here. Could you yes. 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 Yeah, I'm sorry, you were saying that. I had a friend. I had a friend that would have been so All right. I was worried I was at the salt and pepper. I've been called. I'm not one place on the news. All right, Paul, could you explain uh, what we have before us? Sure. Uh, this is a property at 304 North Platten Street, a single family home. Uh, corner of Dallasman, northeast corner of Dallasman and Platten. Uh, there is a proposal for uh, a garage expansion, attached garage expansion here to the, to the north. Um, this is a setback issue. This uh, is the front yard, I believe. Well, this would be considered the rear yard. So they're required to have a 25 foot setback. They're less than, I think, four in that case. So this is the proposed additional garage space here. Have an extra photo of that. So it's simply a rear yard setback issue that's being considered. The size is not an issue. Okay. Ah, okay. So, the, you know, there's the argument can be made the house is already violating that um, because of what we are. Much like Van Lane and Road, it's a similar situation. Good, because you, can, you can't make it work otherwise. Right. Which setback are we talking about? The 22? This one here. The, the back. East property one. So that side is okay? Yes. Yeah, okay. 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 Hearing that, let's uh, hear what the applicant has to say. Okay, it, it's not a garage addition, it's a, it's a carport for my, for my RV. I'm not asking the for any cement or anything. I got a slab, existing slab here already. All I want to do is make a cover for to protect my RV. Um, so there's an existing concrete. There's an existing right there. concrete oh. pad right there already. There's been an RV parked there for over 25 years. Um, with no, no problems with neighbors or anything. And uh, I'm just looking to make the, the carport is going to be open on the sides. So the site line ain't, ain't going to change anything for any of the neighbors. We're just looking for uh, protection. So how, what's kicking in the variance requirement? The expansion of principal use. 25 feet behind the uh, house. So there is a slab there, the RV is parked there, but now this is an, an extension of the principal dwelling, so that's why the setbacks are key. Because there's a roof, but there's no walls. Right. But that's still it's considered. It's still a, attached, physically attached to the principal uh, structure. Okay. So okay. That, I, I, can't, I can't make a freestanding without tearing up the concrete and moving the concrete. You know, if I, if I attach it to the ground, I can leave the concrete. Okay. There. Little so the concrete, concrete. It, it, let's say the applicant was here to put in that hunk of concrete. He would need the same variance as he's asking for. Mm -hmm. That's my first question. Um, not necessarily. I mean, he's, if it was starting from scratch, it was just going to be a 
slab. Um, he, can ex he can expand his driveway, provided that's behind the setback area, which he's back behind his home, so he's back behind the setback. The issue here is that the garage, I suppose, is expanding, or the principal footprint is expanding. That's kicking in the setback. So there's two different things. One is a building setback, one is a pavement setback with a driveway. Yep, okay, I, I get the subtle distinction here. And there's no, um, and it's just the rear yard. There isn't, I see the impervious surface calculations here, but that's just to show that it's good on impervious I, surface. I believe so, right. So I, we rely on our building inspectors to take in the permit, they review it, so I'm using their judgment on what they found in their review, so, as well as the applicant does. So. I have a lot, a lot of questions when I saw this design. So. Right now we have a driveway attached to a garage that, that doesn't have a tapered slab. So for me, and then there's the garage, the existing house is on the right of the, the driveway width. Right. So, so the garage line right Yeah. Backwards. So the is the do we consider all of the pieces <coughs> and everything for approving the structure? Because right now that that pad is not to code, correct? I, I think the pad's okay. It doesn't need to be tapered? Not necessarily. If it was coming back into the right of way or you know, uh, coming back into the throat or the neck of the driveway, maybe you'd have to have a taper on it. Again, this is all back behind the setback area, so it's not a taper issue. I mean, it's probably a convenience to have that taper, right, to drive. Well, didn't we just, isn't there, like, to have something park on the side, you have to have a driveway that goes toward something on the side of the house, right? Like the last application, I, I technically no. Oh, and this is like this is where he's storing something. This is in like right. I'm driving a car in and out of there every day. I imagine it's like you're going camping, so you take the you, you hook up the trailer and you drive it out. And you go over the grass right. that one time. You're doing it. And right. so you're not, you're not required storage, right? I mean, oh. you're not required to have a driveway. Period. If you have a driveway, then it has to be paid. It has to be on a solid surface. But again, when you get to that garage space or that pad space, it doesn't mean it has to be paved to that point. It might be ideal to do that, but you don't have to. <laughs> I, I, you know, I think this was one I'm, I'm in favor of this. It's, it's really, it's conforming to what right. is already there. It's a narrow lot. It's got the, it's the same thing as we're looking at in Van Land in some respects without the extra square footage or, right. or the other issues. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine with it. I just was super curious about the, cla the, the slab and the width of the driveway. I was, I was concerned about the appearance. Part, but the, that, uh, well, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you've got a roof this way. How is that going to match up with what you've got here? We're, we're going to build up. I'm going to take the entrance off the garage, build up through the wall so I get my, my height that I need for clearance. And then we're going to we're going to put the roof 90 from the rest of the homes. Okay. All right. So it'll bookend the 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 the, the, pit, the, the, the house part of the house, right? It's going to it's going to have the same right, profile yeah. as the house does. Yep. To the street. So. Yep. And then I was going to come down four feet from the roof line with with a solid wall. The bottom would be open for your your sight, you know, so that you can see you can see through it. I'm not asking to expose anything. I'm just asking for the roof. So you've talked to the neighbors or Alderman? Have you talked to the neighbors? Yeah, 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 neighbors. neighbors are all okay with it. Okay. Yeah, there, there's no you know pushback on it. I like I said, he's on a corner a lot and. You know, is that a hardship? Could be a bit, but it's not like the, you know, if you take the square footage of the house and the garage and subtract, you know, you're supposed to have the, the, uh, the residence bigger than the accessory uses. And the way I figured it is, I might feel like 130 feet within that. You know, if you were, if you were getting strict to the, to the level of that, I figure it's about 130, and it might even be less because you've got you've got the uh, the lip out there of it's more or less hanging overhang. Mm -hmm. So I think it would even be a little bit more. So I don't think it's a tremendous amount of area. That's in question. I took a look at the property. The property's in fact, Paul. Can you go back to the aerial photo? 
the homes to the north that's along Division Street, they're, far, they're set back pretty far. And there's also a fence there, correct? Yeah. Larry, I think yes, there's a fence. I my, lot, my lot is fenced in, yes. Yeah, it's, you know, from what I saw, it wasn't like there were neighbors very, very close or encroaching closely to that, to that okay. setup. You know, there's a little yeah, bit of setback sure. issue in the back, but um, the neighbors are fine. So I, I'm in support of it. One more question, Paul, and I, just to be clear, because it's now a structure, yes, right? It, it's a cover. Does that make it a, a, uh, like we were talking about earlier, a boathouse? Does it make it a secondary structure, like a garage, a boathouse, a storage shed? Um, even though it's not enclosed, it's still an expansion of the principal use. So you could put walls in it or not walls; it still has a roof on it, and it's an expansion of the principal. Do we know right now, based on that addition, does that put the garage and this above the principal structure? I, I didn't see that from the inspector, but that's a very and good question. That's what Mark was just addressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just those are the numbers that I. Yeah, it puts it over. <laughs> <laughs> that's over. Here's the numbers on the bottom. I subtracted all. It's about 130, 130 over. About 130, roughly feet, square feet. To, does that need to be a variant, very, another variance? If, we if, if it's it. over, it should. And again, I think the inspectors are doing their review, and if there's something missed, that should have been addressed. Uh, again, I'm just being thorough so this person doesn't have to come back. If that gets caught in the inspection process and we didn't approve it, do they have to fill out another application with another fee? I think you can acknowledge it and, and grant the variance if you're comfortable with that. I mean, again, if you're not, you can request additional information if you, if you need that to make a decision. <coughs> okay. So we could add it today? You could. I, I, think, <coughs> I believe you could add it today. Let's do it. You want to make a motion? Yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the requested variance plus the um, the um, overall, if, if it is an issue with the uh, space or the size, square footage, square footage um, we would approve that variance as well. And if it's over, did you just say that? Yes. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. Uh, is there anyone who wishes to speak for or against this property? Very well, gentlemen. Do we understand the motion and does staff believe they understand the motion? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. That would be four to one. You have your variance. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you sir. Thank you all of you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we have um, we have two in a row from Mount Associates. No, we have Phil Jennings first. Phil Jennings, the sign guy. Is he here? Yep. Are you Phil? I am. All right. I'm Phil. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jessica Diedrich from the Executive Director of Freedom House. All right. And that's what we're here to discuss. I was really confused because I was. Uh, Took me a while to figure that out, but like I say, I'm easily confused, but now I understand. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Paul, would you uh, explain what's being done here? Yes, yeah, so I can clarify that. That's uh, This is the Freedom House property here on St. Anthony. Um, this is an older aerial photo, and these property, this footprint of the uh, building has been removed. Um, and this is the Current footprint, uh, newly constructed uh, shelter facility, um, and the request actually is for a sign variance. This property has a very density residential zoning. Um, it's basically a multifamily type zoning, and they're hoping to add some signage to the uh, new structure. Um, because it's in an R3 district, the maximum size is about 16 square feet in size. They're proposing about 54 square feet. Uh, this side, this uh, proposed sign here. So. That is the request variance, um, and that's going to be on a new, uh, new wall face. There's another perspective. So, I believe it's, I believe so it's yes, that area right there. It would go right there. Or yes. Yeah. The highway. Right. Yeah. It faces Curry Lane and 5457. Right, and it's lit. It is lit, mm -hmm. but there is no residential property that would be directly facing the sun. It would be all traffic. Um, 
perhaps maybe you could you could address the issue that at least wasn't brought out as much as I was wondering about. I I assume you want this is more more than just a sign to say where you are. This is a sign where you want the clientele that you are dealing with to be able to see and to understand what it is and where you are. Correct. So a lot of the signs that we deal with are more passive. Yours is actually intended to be an active sign of... The directional marker, in essence. Uh, yeah, a beacon, rather than just a passive sign. So um, for my purposes, that's all it takes. I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of this. With that, I'll lean back and uh, allow other people to ask questions, because I'm sure they'll have some. Is it one sign? Or it's just going to be the one. Okay. Two. We are. We had originally talked about doing two. Paul, do you want to put that picture back up? That last one that you had up there. The no, the, the drawing. Or the, there. Okay. We had originally talked about putting an additional sign on this wall, right. but we just decided to go with that one okay. because traffic from both sides and with the size too. It's it's you know it's allowed two sides. We said let's just go with it. If they weren't in a residential, what would, the, what would it be? Called? It depends what zoning district it oh, would okay. be in. I mean, it could be much larger than that. Uh, residential requirements are typically lower for obvious reasons. Yeah. So residential uses. And at the 16 square feet that we are actually limited to, mm -hmm. people really wouldn't be able to tell what it was from 57, 54. Sure. Right. What's the total square footage again? Sorry. It's, it's sorry. 54 square feet. 54. Go ahead. It's not really a, like, it is a residential area, but they're not. What they're saying is that they're not in that type of area. Well, they're considered an institutional type uh, yeah. signage. Right. So it's, it's different than your multifamily or your single family type. Okay. Has there been any talk of going and getting it rezoned? I don't think there's a need to do that, no. no they're, they're, they're permitted principal use there. Okay. Well, Jim? It's an institutional area. I mean, you got you got a park across the street, curative connections, you know, the highway, the VA clinic across the, the Curry Lane and the, and the on-ramp in university. I mean, it's just in a bunch of senior living places and things like that. This is, a, you know, a completely appropriate signage. It just is a mismatch with the zoning, you know. Yeah, don't be dismissive of senior living places. <laughs> 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 I'm not being dismissive. I'm just saying it's, 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 it's some of us will get there sooner than It's like maybe, maybe they should have larger signs than they've got too, right? But it's right. it's like this is, I think this is appropriate relative to what we're talking about and the speed of traffic going by and things like that. We've, t we've talked about that at several level the other mm -hmm. variance requests yep. um, where, you know, there's there's a high speed traffic and, you you know, it, it merits a little bit larger signs sometimes as well. It just, this, this is, I know, I think it's just appropriate. I make a motion to approve. Second. I suspect we're in final agreement. A motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. There it is. Now we have the Mullen Associates. Okay, we'll start off with the uh, floodplain issue. If you could identify yourself. Uh, Dave Krauser from Mao and Associates. Um, okay. I made the request. Um, I think you've probably seen uh, numerous ones. This is kind of similar to other ones that we've uh, submitted in the past. Um, we've got a lot that's uh, about 60 feet wide. So we're trying to fit something in here with the floodplain. and. Uh, by the by, the state, we have to be 15 feet, uh, one foot above flood. Yeah, I I, uh, I I uh, I allowed you, you to start that. speaking yeah. before I should. Okay, have. so okay. that's not your fault. That's right. mine, and we'll now let Paul give staff's interpretation. Sure. Okay. So, so speak with me firmly after. The <laughs> <day>. <laughs> uh, this is a property on uh, Bay of Green Bay, uh, 1937 Lakeside Place, East Shore Drive is just south here. Uh, an area of single-family homes. This is an infill lot. Uh, there is an existing uh, non-conforming detached garage here. I don't recall if there was a home here or not, but I think it's been vacant for several several years. It's gone. Yeah, it's, and it's been gone for quite a while. 
So because this is in a floodplain uh, and the relative existing grade, they have to elevate the uh, earth and then therefore elevate the principal structure that will be planned to be built there. So um, this is a plan that was submitted by Mr. Krauser uh, showing the lot and the basic footprint here. So because it's in a floodplain, uh, they have to provide fill around the structure, 15 feet, one foot above the base flood elevation around the entire structure. That creates kind of an island around the structure as flood protection. The problem here is the lot is very narrow, very narrow, not very wide. So they can't physically provide that fill. So in lieu of that, they can do retaining walls, reta retaining wall system uh, that has to be stamped and approved by a uh, professional. So the variance, the board can grant the variance for that reduction in, in fill requirements. So based on the material that's, that's provided. Um, these are some additional graphics from uh, the applicant. So we have released a permit to provide fill on this site. As you can see, they are filling it. There is some clay material. There's a retaining wall that's going in here. Um, this is another view of that retaining wall. Um, the concern that staff has, at least initially, is this doesn't match what was proposed by uh, the applicant in the sense that the cross section doesn't meet those standards. So that's a question you may want to ask the applicant why there is a disparity between those two. Um, so. What's the difference in the, cr the cross section, Paul? Is that is that a stepped back wall right. there versus what we saw that looked like a flush wall? Right. So the idea in the ordinance is there's some sort of terrace typically built. There's some gradual side slope up, and then with a maximum two foot high uh, retaining wall and some drainage area and so forth. So again, looking at this, that doesn't seem to comply with what was being proposed as part of the variance. So I think there's a again a chance for some clarity as to what this is. We, we don't want a sheer wall drop off in these scenarios. We want to have a tapered, stepped up um, side slope. Was this permitted? The filling was permitted and you can re you can place retaining walls, I guess, to obviously support the fill that goes in there. But at the end of the day, that still has to meet the ordinance that's required. And also to come before Submit the board to get designs that you get. Um, I guess to be real honest with you, I didn't know there was a discrepancy until Paul just showed me the pictures. So okay. I, I would have to defer back to the property owners for that portion of it right there. Um, uh, we did design it with a step in here based on previous ones that we had with the step down. And I, I think there obviously was a miscommunication then with, with the property owners that it was installed this way. I know we were trying to keep uh, the, the, the trees and stuff along the, uh, the side here and some of the existing drainage that's going across there. Um, <laughs> that kind of caught me off guard, seriously. Um, but I think Paul, Paul addressed uh, uh, the issues as far as the uh, one foot above 15 feet out from the structure. And uh, it's typical on these narrow lots that that's what we ask for. Now, I don't, did, did you know that, did, had Paul indicated that to you with the? No, we, I mean, that was all up to the excavator that installed the stuff. Okay, I, no, seriously, I, did, I didn't know it was installed that way. I, I, well, I mean, originally this was gonna be temporary and we just, they decided to make, you know, we decided at that point, why would we, Make well, right, and then that could be the case. I'm just raising the issue is that, I mean, the board has a, an image of what it's going to be built out as, and then physically in the field is something different, which means this could change, but um, it just doesn't seem to line up, so we're just asking for clarity on what the difference is, or if it's going to be remedied in some, some period of time. Yeah, I, my principal question would be, this is like we've seen it before. Mr. Krauser is a that it's like we've seen it before. Sure. Um, so we assume so that, the, that the final product will meet engineering standards to accomplish the safety issues that are the whole function of the ordinance. Right. Given what we've had explained to us in the application, we can make a determination of whether we need a grant variance. But somebody We'll have to inspect this to make sure that, it, I guess, 
Mao and associates will have to assure the various people in charge that there was an adequate uh, design and construction of whatever is put here. Mm -hmm. We're not here to grant a variance so much as to accept the fact that these are small lots and that there are engineering solutions that can be done to accomplish the goal of the ordinance. So we assume that whatever is put in there has been inspected and with and that we have been presented with the right stuff. Right. So as I mentioned before, a permit was issued through our office to provide the fill. Um, yeah. It would go through. They'd compact it. Um, we're trusting it's it's done to an appropriate professionalism, so to speak. But again, there's just a difference between what was proposed by the applicant and what's constructed. So I I think the board should be aware of that difference, and I don't know if that would influence your decision or not. It should be made aware of it. Uh, could I ask, Paul, is that, um, I, I'm just looking at how far they are along here and what they've got, um, is there, you know, and I understand the drop-off, I'm just wondering if there's a, a, a solution to possibly leaving this the way it is um, by maybe uh, creating a, a, a railing or something along that edge, because I would assume that that's going to be the city's issue is with somebody possibly falling off there, and if that would be a, a viable solution to obviously moving this, this, this that's, there's a, a lot of stuff here that's gonna be very significant to move that along. Right, I mean, we're going off the design that's provided in that I, little window, so to speak. I, I understand, and like I said, this yeah. is the first I saw this too, that it was installed this, this way. Um, I, I'm just looking at the property owners here right now, um, is, I would be putting a railing across that. Would that would that be a viable solution to possibly uh, granting a variance to leave it where it is? Well, I think the issue is is the height. I don't know the relationship to the lot line. Again, there has to be a two foot setback off the lot line, two foot wall max height, and then that could be stepped up to I suppose terrace to a natural grade. But um, you know, this is a sheer drop off, and this you know, it doesn't appear to be code. I mean, I, again, the board could consider deviating from that. But again, I think that would require a new design and new considerations. So. No, we're not here to provide engineering solutions. We're here to provide a judgment on how this conforms or doesn't conform to the ordinance. So we will have to make our decision based on what we have presented in okay. the plan. Okay. The final resolution rests with the city and inspector inspections, and we're not holding you harmless okay. against those. <laughs> yeah, I. There's a limit to what we can do. I, I know. I, I, I was just <laughs> trying to solve, solve an issue here. I understand. <laughs> Seriously. I understand. Um, well, I guess let's attack the, the, uh, the request as made, and then we'll have to address we'll have to address that. Right, and staff has no concern with what's being proposed. We've run that through the DNR. They're okay with that yeah. as proposed, except now what has been built is, is different. Yeah, I, I look at it as, a, as an inspection issue that may result in something we have to think about further later, but at this point we can pass a decision based on what we have before us, and then it's your problem. Okay. And <laughs> maybe you need us to help resolve later. Yeah, I don't, we, we don't we'll want to derail with it. it. We don't <laughs> want to derail this space. now unless we, you know, we may derail it later. Well, how much of the walls, how much of the retaining wall is up? Is this on both sides of the lot? It's on is both that, sides. Is on yeah, both sides the other right? side's not as high. <coughs> well, well, I'll have to take a look and see what's actually there. I have a feeling that the issue of engineering sufficiency is meant. It's a question of safety. I, I don't know that. And it's not compliant with the code language that we have. I mean, again, there are certain standards in that side slope that have to be met. If, if they're not met, they'd have to be considered by the board as some sort of alternative again. Much like the fill is an alternative, in this case with retaining walls, there are standards for the retaining walls that have to be met as well, the terracing. We, again, we Each don't want sure walls. Of should be stepped right. back right. at yeah. least half a block. Well, there's no backup information on the shear wall, so we can't really make a judgment on that. We're not here to inspect. Mm -hmm. no, right. no, no, so I'm simply informing you of actions that have been taken okay. in the field right. that could okay. ultimately be enforcement issues, but I, I don't want you to approve, consider approving something that is maybe different in the field. If someone comes up to you and says, well, did you see what they're doing out there? <laughs> it's something different. No, we're, right. We're, we're not, not approving that. that. Yeah, we're not approving that, and we'll right. make sure in our in our um, motion that we're not holding them harmless against that. We're basing our judgment tonight 
not on the pictures that we've seen here, but on the pictures we see here. But this right here. Yeah. So I guess just a one quick question. <coughs> so you got permits, you got okays, and you're coming to us be just as a formality because they need a. No. So how do they get a permit without? Yep. You know what you know what my question is? I, I think so. So okay. it starts this way that the land is low with a rain of flood time. Yeah. So they have to get to a certain elevation. So right. they have to bring fill into that site. Right. So they got a permit through us to do that, a grading plan. And as you can see they've they filled the site. Um, they could add retaining walls as well as well to contain the earth, right? Because mm -hmm. you're adding a lot of earth. But because this is in a floodplain, those walls have to meet a certain standard. Okay. Because they're designed <coughs> to withstand hydrostatic pressure in case right. of a flood event. So the fill is one thing. The other issue we're contending with now is, is the walls. Are those compliant with both engineering and the code that requires them to have a certain side slope? I, understand. I think the, the, the question um, you might be getting at is more about why would they be bringing fill on the site if we haven't granted the variance yet? And I, right. I think because it's the only like variance <coughs> is for fill, and yet there's an approval. I mean, there's an approval it's it's some form of approval. I mean, there's like a multi-step process that's okay. going on. So this is the first step. The second step might be then the variance for the fill, and then there's a, a building permit application right. that comes in. Right. So it's, it's this sequential. variance. This variance has to be granted before a building permit could be issued, but it didn't have to be granted before you could start putting some fill on the right. site. Right. I think that's. Oh, the, so you the you need the variance to build a structure on the site. <coughs> oh, okay, that's cool. I just wondered why we were here talking about it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and on that end, just for my education, since we're here, because yep. we've seen this twice now, when we're approving it, we're, we're approving the fill at a certain level. The retaining wall is part of that variance as drawn. Right. So if we're approving that and it's not done, to his point, is that an enforcement issue or did we grant the variance and now they can make that however they want? Nope. No, well, we're That's what I'm trying to clarify. Because yeah. well, we'll I feel like we're not like... We'll grant the variance as it's been, uh, as it's been explained to us and... Plan. We're granting yeah, less than 15 feet around the house right. within the drop off because the lot's too narrow to yep. do that. Yep. So that's the only thing we're talking that's about. That's all we're talking about. Yeah. Talking how they engineer it, how they build it, how everything else goes. That's, that's between, an inspection issue. That's between the yeah, yeah, folks want, and everything else. But I want to bring it to your attention so you're making an informed decision about what you're approving. Copy that. Because right. in the field, something's different than what's on the map, and that's only fair to know that there's a difference. Yeah, copy that. Okay. Yeah, because this is like, oh, somebody poured the garage, the, they poured the slab before they filed for the permit, or they built the porch, or they built the fence before they. Mm -hmm. Right. They this asked is the, this, this would be a self-imposed hardship, right? Because the hardship is now. I think ultimately it's an enforcement issue potential. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm still a little confused because mm -hmm. there's no detail of the wall in here. In what I'm looking at right now, well, in the submittal, and that was revised. Yeah. That was revised. Yeah. Oh, so now we have a detail. Okay, got it. So there is a detail. Okay, I got it. Okay, so we are kind of approving that, that design. Well, I think you're you're considering what's before you. What has been constructed in the field is something different. So you have to take that for what it's worth, I guess. I mean, you, you can act on what was what's before you, but ultimately it may be an enforcement issue for us to, to review. If you don't feel comfortable making that decision, knowing this information, <coughs> you, you can table it and look for <coughs> a different solution or design. Can't okay, we simply approve that? I mean, the, what yes. was submitted to yes. us, we yeah. can approve can, that. In, in a vacuum, you, you can do that, yes. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm just trying to provide information that's available to right. us. I don't. I feel I have to disclose that to you. If, if I know about it, you should know about right. it. Right. Yeah, that's fair enough. We, but we can pretend we didn't hear it. <laughs> Dave, they would like to. We, we are, we're not here to provide engineering. We're not here to provide enforcement. We're not here to provide inspection. We're here to provide approval of the plan, the variance of the plan. Uh, and I would note that whoever makes the motion, we should include the the paper that you just showed us with the yeah, with the plan for the uh, wall. That becomes part of our record. Yeah, because we don't have that yet. If, 
I don't know if I put it on the agenda. I have it's not in the packet, but he had it on the screen. It's not in the packet. So if you've already got this, that isn't a problem. Right. <clears throat> All right. I'm All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Does anybody else wish to speak for or against this? Mm -hmm. Hi, Mary. Yeah. Come on up. <laughs> must be a neighbor. <laughs> must be a neighbor. We're two D neighbors here. Okay, I, that's yeah. what I get. And I and I and I just have all, actually a lot of questions that you folks have, um, and and probably we're landing in a, in a spot similar to the hearing being discussed here. That um, we we found. A, Can you state your name? Oh, and sure. Your address and it's Mary Pass. We found it peculiar that the, the date of this request was for December 6th, I think it was 6th, the variance request was December 6th, uh, and, and that work began on December 26th, so I mean, the work, work began before all of this was com coming through, the variance request was from December 6th. So we found that kind of peculiar, but you know it's kind of moved along, and, and that structure is, is there, the dirt's there, um, uh, and it seems that the conversation now is about setbacks, right? The 15-foot setback. Is that, and, and really, I have questions about on the footprint of the building that we, we saw. If you could give us some dimensions of how many feet. Just to help us know um, what we're well, the fifty. The one thing is the fifteen feet is not a setback off any property line. The fifteen feet is a the perimeter feet. around the building right. itself. Right. That, that I understand that part. I guess what what no, this kind of cuts the quick kind of what is of interest to me because we're we're you know, we're neighbors to the right mm -hmm. of that run, and uh, and we've had conversations before too. I just want to make sure that. What our verbal converse, conversations were are being represented here. So, mm -hmm. um, can you tell us how many feet between the you know, the uh, east side edge of this footprint and the property line, ignoring the fifteen it's, the floodplains? Um, from uh, should be from that uh, pad that's right there. Should be eleven around eleven feet from the patio pad. I believe that's what that is. The wall should be two feet off the property line. So, so eleven feet from the edge of the patio, the enclosed porch or screen porch, I think you guys would call it, to the property line. Yes. Okay. And then, and then the house itself. It's like about twenty. It's going to be a little bit more than that. Yeah. Like twenty one. Mm -hmm. Really? That far? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It looks like the same distance between your house and the line. Mm -hmm. And then their house and the line. And then on the west side of the house, it's, it's there's less foot footage mm -hmm. between the house and the property line. Right? It'll, from from that, uh, I believe from that little stoop that's sticking out, I think we're real close to that 11 feet also. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so that was this question we had for for you know what are these dimensions? Because mm -hmm. you know there's all these photocopies back and forth, and the scale doesn't work anymore. <laughs> yeah. Trust okay. that, and, and there aren't any numbers. A lot of numbers on the paper, but not on that. Okay, um, and I, not to be nerdy here, but it, um, I, I did see your, your information that said that uh, the surcharge concept, um, that, that the plan was to fill to 595, I believe it was, and then we move no. a couple of feet. I think if you look at this, the, uh, there. This is the one I'm looking at right here. That, no, okay, yeah, mine's a little bigger. I can read it yeah. without my glasses. <laughs> the uh, the uh, uh, garage of the house is going to be about a um, 590. Well, I'm actually talking about the surcharge that you remove again the, to compact the, the, the organic soil. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm lo you're losing me here. Okay, sure. uh, the plan is to really pile on a lot of dirt. Right, so that the, the subsoil or the, the, the organic layers in the soil are compacted. 
and then you're going to scrape that off, right? Okay. Yeah, I, and that and that they're, they've got a, a soils guy coming in that's actually yeah. Yeah. that's doing that. I'm not yeah. charging. And I, and I understand the process. Okay. And, I, and I'm and I'm an advocate for this process because I want these guys' basement to work. <laughs> for them not <laughs> we'd to have problems. We'd like all of them to work. Um, yes. But I, I just want to draw your attention to the little stick on top of the dirt in your in your yard. It says mm -hmm. 590, not 595, which this drawing says. Yeah, that 595 so is. is just, not just a that's just I know that's weight. Right. supposed to be yeah. there for the weight. Weight, yeah. The, whether they have right. enough weight now, that's we do have enough weight. Um, yeah. I don't know where the 595 okay. came yeah, from. Yeah, I don't either. That, that and, doesn't and, and I don't so care. I'm just trying to make sure that it's all working informal out. Informal yeah. indication of how far they should go, and then <coughs> 590 is what it's going to be, and that's what the, that's what's shown on here. Yeah, that hasn't been very nice at all. Um, you know. We're certainly we're certainly willing to, to support what they're planning to do as far as the variance requests for the space around. We are, you know, um, very interested in your discussion about the wall. Um, that's that's that picture that was up there actually is looking at us, and I think that your excavator said that there was going to be one more layer uh, of, of stone put on there. So so it's going to go one more um, one more. There actually, is one more further down. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the section that we see there is what he yeah. said would have one more, one more yeah. layer of stone or block. Uh, so, you know, we're concerned about that. And my brother actually fell off a wall with his, with his, <laughs> with his lawnmower a number of years ago. So I appreciate the safety comment um, in our backyard. So, so we're, not, we're not, you know, you know, you know we support the variance. Um, we're concerned about these things. We're also very concerned about the process because it seems kind of peculiar to us that, that this kind of structural commitment was made. Um, and it's not, not to cope, that's what I'm hearing. Uh, and, and that's not good for anybody. I mean, that's fixing that's going to be a good deal. <laughs> so so I, I was concerned about that. Um, there is one thing that is important to us, and again, we've, talk, we've talked about this. And I, and I would ask that you folks would Put this, I'm assuming you'll put this, put this in your, your um, motion. And that is, again, if you can go back to the, the footprint picture, um, you know, they've, they've got their screen porch that's there. Uh, and that screen porch is going to be like right across from our living space as well. Um, and, and so we've talked about this and the concept of having some kind of uh, physical divider there, especially with that being closer to the lot line. Um, is what we agree would be a nice, nice solution. But I'm going to ask you to put that in in your motion that there be a physical barrier there, you know, fence, privacy fence of some kind, for you know maybe a 16 feet section, so that we're not looking into each other's windows, um, and that it be of a sufficient height, maybe six feet or something like that. And again, this, we've talked about doing this uh, between us, but I, I would very much like to formalize that in this process. <coughs> I'm not sure we can do that, Rick, but I'll, okay. we'll, we'll we hear your, <coughs> we hear your yeah. request. We hear your request. Again, that's really where we're headed with our conversations between us, too. So, but We try to stay out of the neighbor thing. So, yeah. Well, it, the <laughs> just in, the, in terms of solutions of the uh, safety issue, though, that certainly would take us yeah. a ways on that point, too. So, uh, um, I think you know you've been bringing up your three points of of consideration yes. for making decisions: the, the lot, the lot hardship, and the property limitations hardship, and public interest. And, and I understand that a lot. I've lived on that property my entire life, so so I know that, and I and I kind of gone from when there were no floodplain requirements to every time FEMA has. Adjusted them, so I so I understand that, we, and we built um, a new house in the next door, you know, under, under the 2009 rules. So so again, I understand that and it gets complicated, and there are always always things that surprise you <laughs> all along the way. That's part of the deal. Um, but that understanding is only so far, and, and there is hardship for us. Uh, you know, the application says no hardship uh, to these these matters. There is hardship for us. Um, uh, it's an aesthetic change to the neighborhood to have that that elevation and then a two-story house on top of that. That is an aesthetic 
dramatic aesthetic, aesthetic change in, in the neighborhood um, and for us next door. Um, so I, I, again, not opposing the, the variance request, but I would like to say that that uh, variance request of courtesy could reflect that. Uh, it's kind of like <laughs> the line, the line in, the, in the variance request is no hardship to the neighbors. Well, that's not true. There is hardship. And, and, and there will continue to be hardship because our whole planting, you know, of our property between that wall and, and our house is forever changed. I mean, uh, replacing trees, and we, we are now looking at a pretty sizable landscaping project to, to, to kind I, of work I with would that. like to add to that, Mary, though, that you guys did plant your trees extremely close to the property line, to the line that you knew was not your property. Yeah, and, and also, and we don't need to get in. This is this is yeah. why I tread yeah. very carefully on the neighbor issues because we're not here to adjudicate that. I, I would like to just comment on that. Those trees were planted when the, the FEMA regulations did not require what, what we have to do. I mean, that's that's just the way it was. It, it's we, we never could envision that eight feet of dirt would have to be put in there. I mean, that's just, that is hardship. That's hardship for them, but there's hardship for us too. And I, and I, and I don't want that to be lost mm -hmm. in the scheme of things. You know, it's, and, and again, I'm looking forward to us working these things out and some of this, some stage. of this may have to um, be resolved with your older persons. Um, there's a limit to what we can do here <coughs> for us. We're just trying to decide whether the ordinances of it met. And I understand your concern, Mary, sure. that there's some implication that perhaps there is no um, effect on the public and you're arguing that there actually is right. because you're part of the public and you're right next door. So and, and the neighborhood in, in general. Right. Again, the neighborhood in general. But at the same time I think you're going to be affected by just about anything that's done on that property. Absolutely. So absolutely um, like you said, the ordinances, the, the FEMA regulations are only going up. They're not going down. So the sooner they get something built there, Mary, they're, if they wait too long, it's going to be higher. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I, 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 that's really true. That's really true. And again, I said, I, I, I want to be clear. We're not, we're not opposing their, their request right now. I just, I, have, I would like the. You have some concerns to, that you would. Say that, yeah, you would like uh, perhaps to be included in the way they resolve this. We'll take that into account. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions, comments before we go on? Anybody else wish to speak for or against? Okay, if you all could have a seat, Thank you. we'll talk it over. Thoughts? I mean, when we've seen these before, they've certainly been stepped back retaining walls. I mean, and that's, what's, that's what, uh, what has been presented to us. I, I'm in favor of approving a variance um, from the exception of the 15 foot of fill, one foot above the flood, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, if it's held back by, you know, a, a retaining wall as proposed. As we've seen the plan, you're saying we can pass off on it. Yeah, I, but I, but, but, or, you know, do we, you know, and if we say that, and then there's like absolutely no way, you know, that they can, they can adjust that fill and adjust those walls, and then it kills the whole project and what have you. I mean, I, I don't know where that leaves, you know, anybody certainly having a, of, of, you know, two straight walls of, of retaining wall and a bunch of dirt sitting there for years um, isn't going to help anybody either. So the other option maybe is that we sit back and wait until staff has a chance to take a look at it with the engineer and see what the possibilities are for reworking that site. Well, if we were to approve the variance as uh, presented to us, we wouldn't be holding them harmless. They've whatever they've done so far before the variance has been granted is at their risk. And if indeed they wish to make a case that that becomes a variance, then they come back a hardship to enough to want us to can reconsider a variance, then they come back. That's, that's a fair way to characterize it, yeah. yeah. So I would be inclined to us to make a, a judgment tonight on what we have 
had presented to us. Yeah, because no matter what, someone wants to, they want to build on that property. This is the steps, so and we've approved those before. Mm -hmm. They build it wrong, they come back for a variance. Right. Then we make that judgment or whatever, or they get it fixed. But no matter what, we're approving the design. And that conversation, if it had to happen, would be one that would include conversations about railings or fencing or oh yeah like that. that would be a difficult conversation okay, but yeah. it's one that may be appropriate for us uh, it's at least as appropriate for us as us passing judgment on these types of things at all so yeah so I, anyway that would be my yeah. encouragement here yeah I, I would second your motion if I didn't make time. motion yet yeah, oh, well, I'll make a motion to approve the variance as presented and as designed um, including the with, step. with the stepping okay. wall. I'll second that. Do you wish to include any consideration uh, that Ms. Pappas uh, explained on neighborly concerns? Not at this time. Not my, not my motion. Okay. We have a motion before us. It's been made and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 That would be 5 0. We have your variance. Okay, Mr. Krauser, we're back for, the, for uh, the second stage of your presentation. Are there any retaining walls in this? Uh, this would be Mr. Schneider. I've talked to you on the phone. I haven't met you yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, shoot. You missed it? I missed you snooze, you lose, man. <coughs> Pardon me. Bless you. Thank you. We don't have the motion for that, right? Just sneeze. The blesses sneeze. It's outside of our purview, but uh, not not allowed. Very well. <clears throat> we have a, a plan here. You'd like to uh, explain what's before us, Paul? Sure. There's a paving request at 212 Elvina Street. Uh, the existing property is a multifamily and has an existing gravel driveway that's been in place for several several years. Uh, there's a vacant lot to the south, and there's a shared access agreement between both properties. Uh, property is owned R3, it's a multi-family area, and they would like to pave across that lot line that requires a variance. So this was the initial plan of survey provided by the applicant, uh, you know, showing the lot line and the approximate uh, area of the uh, gravel driveway that has existed for several, several years. Um, again, another perspective view. But I think the uh, request is slightly changed, Dave, maybe you can speak to that. Uh, they Again. decided to expand that driveway a little bit to kind of square it off and make it a little bit wider, more practical for two-way traffic, I guess. So again, the variance is along the property line here, there's a 10-foot setback either way of that, and they're obviously encroaching over that. So that would require the variance. That's the only variance before. And you said there's a shared, what was that again? It's a shared access or easement agreement uh, between the property owners. And I did talk to the property owner to the south, and she's aware of the, the request. So, and, and she doesn't have a problem. Go, if you could go back to the aerial pole, I think that's, if you look at that driveway, that's what they've been using. And if you look at the frontage on that vacant lot, uh, they've got about, uh, it looks like about 50, 55 feet going across there and it already crosses that driveway. Yeah. Um, discussions with her, she used to actually own the apartment complex that we're trying to pave right now. And she sold that to this gentleman here. And the goal is that they'll actually both, when they build this piece out, they'll both use that driveway in common. When you look at that small frontage that they've got in there, it only makes sense that that's what they'll do. So <clears throat> my conversations, and here's how it's changed, and I, uh, Paul, there you go. Uh, that area in pink, she's willing to expand that easement because that, that, that pink area is actually outside the easement that they have right now. She's willing to expand that and then we can make this driveway actually the 20 feet wide, which is uh, kind of a minimum yeah. with the city because the way we've got it right now, if we just paved that easement and uh, uh, he'd have to actually, Doug would have to actually pave another probably about four feet of his property, I'm still only 13 feet wide. I can't even get two cars side by side. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting too dark, too close to this existing apartment, so I'm trying to keep a decent width in there. 
So my conversations with her on the phone was if we could do the seven feet, and I sent this to her, and she's actually talked to Paul. She said she didn't have a problem with that. She'd actually be in favor of that. Um, and then we'd have a 20-foot wide, you'd be able to have two cars pass. And then they would actually create that with a joint easement so that that would service this other piece in the future. Makes sense. Yeah. I, I, I think this one's pretty straightforward, seriously. Kind of. I think so, too. I, I, just, I just will add the caveat that we're not passing judgment on the legality, legitimacy, or whatever of the joint agreement between the two parties. We will only be passing judgment on the need to grant the variance to the construction. We're not holding the applicant harmless from somebody eventually claiming you shouldn't have ever done that. We're not going to say you can't, you can't come and say, well, the board said we could do it. No, the board just said it could be done. Sure. We didn't. So, all right. Yeah, we understand. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you understand. I motion to approve the variance as requested. With the, I mean, is that one included in the variance as requested? Is that update? Yep. Yes. Okay. So I motion to approve the variance as requested. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to approve the uh, <coughs> variance requested on uh, for the Alvina Street property. Everyone understands? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Finally, we always say that the last person is the long suffering uh, applicant. Paul, oh, would you uh, fill us in on this? Sure. <laughs> Sorry, not that easy. Uh, this property is at 2895 East Mason Street. This is uh, the northeast corner of uh, Mason. And I guess with I-43 here, uh, Superior Road, this is Jehovah Witness uh, Church. And they have plans to reconstruct this parking lot here. And I think they were before the board back in 18, and they've got two variances approved. I think the previous coverage was one. I'm trying to recall the other. Um, and the parking lot landscape, and those both were improved, but they've lapsed since that time. So. Um, Jesse, the applicant's reapplied here in this case. And he's also added another corner side yard setback. Um, there's a 15 foot setback that would be along this corner here that they're also encroaching into. Um, and this is the latest site plan of that. And it shows some encroachment uh, in this area and possibly up here. So, again, there's three variances the impervious coverage, the interior lot landscaping, and then the encroachments into the uh, building setback. That's the new one. Well, that's the new one. That's we approved the variance previously, which just lapsed. It just lapsed, correct. Yes. Okay. Could you go back to the aerial view? Yep. So the drive around piece on the frontage, if we're calling Mason the frontage, that's the piece right there. Yeah, Can you mention so another one as well? Another setback issue? Uh, I don't know how close it is here. This could be also a, a candidate as well. Okay. Uh, maybe just really entirely around the property. If you the look at the whole thing, as you go all the way around, if you look back at the setback, it's, it's set within that. So it was built at that time. Was it back in the 80s or something yeah. like that? And so we're not looking at increasing or changing or anything like that. Typically what we'd want to do is just take this thing, grind it up, repave it, compact it, and put another one on top. But after doing some soil samples, we realize there's some issues with the base. And so we got to take care of those issues. Otherwise, this lot is going to last another 10, 15 years. And we want it to last another 30 years. And so we want to do a quality job, get it done right. And so we're trying to address all these issues which are presently there, but we want them on record. So we're doing it properly, doing it the right way. Um, we're not looking at increasing the footprint. Um, we're looking at keep maintaining pretty much the same thing. But even on the, if you look on the north side there, that is all within, the, that's going to be within the setback too. If you look at the, I don't know if they give you a copy of the, uh, the drawings. Yeah. We would lose probably if we had to maintain those setbacks at least 30 to 35 percent of our parking at a minimum, which would, right now we're, we're using almost every spot. And at that point then we're starting to have to use street side parking if we possibly can. And, you can see how they, it's not curb and gutter in the one area. We start impacting the residential community, which we don't want to do. We want to be good neighbors. And so we feel by doing this, uh, hopefully we're minimizing the impact to the neighborhood. We're keeping the security of all of our uh, parishioners first and foremost, especially when you start looking at lighting, snow removal, all those types of things along the street side. We just feel it's the best option for this facility at this time. 
So the design is slightly different than the last time we talked, nope. or it's the same exact design? They had to do some specific drawings, for instance, like the driveways were having to make some adjustments, the cutouts and how we laid out the driveways, having them equal. Okay. Um, there's a sidewalk along the building, I think, I don't know if that was on the original plan to the north side of the building that. there yeah. and right up. Um, what we found in a lot of our buildings, we're trying to remove some of the veg heavy growth vegetation next to buildings. Uh, we're having a lot of issues with mold and those types of issues and water mm -hmm. permeation. Mm -hmm. So almost all of our facilities we have, we have over 30,000 in the mainland U.S. that we're dealing with. We're trying as much as possible to mitigate that issue. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to find ways to work with that. Um, we're trying to make it to grade in the back, which is going to help out with that sidewalk also. Um, overall, just improving it, but not, not changing. In fact, I think we're going to... I know we're not we're not expanding it, but we're, we're not we're not trying to change it. We're trying not to change it as much as possible. Keep it the same thing that we have because we know that we are asking for a variance here, so we shouldn't ask for the world. Well, I know four of the five of us were sitting at the table the last time you asked yeah. for these things. Right. So right. Hopefully, I'm quite familiar with the area. The I'm by there a lot. So. We're looking at us. We're hoping for a spring. Day. We're trying to get all the plans in place, pull the permits end of the month, beginning of next month. And and start in the spring. I've been spring waiting for you guys to do it. <laughs> it's been a long process. I mean, and I suspected that you were going to have to come back because I was pretty sure it had been over here. Yeah. So. And it was, what it is, there's a pretty substantial amount. We need to make sure that base is properly taken care of. I think when it was originally done, the fill that was brought into that location because we're being it was all swampy along there originally. And so we've had to deal with some of those issues and take care of those. All right, any further questions of the applicant? I think we understand the situation. Thank you, sir. All right, sir, did you wish to speak for or against? Uh, did I forget you? No. Okay. He's in my room. I like to keep that quiet, though. <laughs> yeah. Good oh. <laughs> Motion to be a friend tonight. <laughs> All right. We don't want to. We don't want to keep uh, Mr. Gertzen as uh, associate waiting any longer. So um, move to approve as requested. I'll second. Motions were made and seconded to approve uh, the variance for the property at the East Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Five zero. You got it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Longest wait, but the fastest action. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You got it. Welcome. That motion to close the floor for discussion. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We do have something left. We've got a couple of things. So that is the draft that Jesse provided. Um, we want to get. We have one more pick at it, so to speak, or look at it. So next time we say yes or no, right? Well, right, and we're trying to get this implemented. We've had some staffing issues, and we've had some formatting issues, so I know it's a little bit behind the ball a little bit, but uh, we want to get it out to you one more time. Okay. Um, we're probably going to move forward on it, but if you saw something that wasn't a concern, let us know. Otherwise, we're going to put it out. Are you going to have it say plans are not to be larger than 11 by 17 in red, and then pay the higher <laughs> page printing cost <laughs> for the color copy as opposed to black and white. I, I could include that if that's <laughs> critical. <laughs> I don't know how you guys feel, but literally the only thing I would change is get the application forward, get their explanation in the back. So I would do page one, your explanation, two, three application, and then this one, the you back. Put, you put page two as page. The last page. I, yeah, that's I would okay. make this the front that of the thing. The, the front of the thing the oh. Right. So this one, one, then this, the then the application, and, and then, then this one at the back. Okay. Yep. But if anybody cares, I just think yep. get them the application. Okay. But uh, do you need a motion or settle on this? At this point, the way I understand it is that you'll proceed with it, and if we, it's a, it's a work in progress. I right. think it, I think it looks great, and yeah. I appreciate all the time staffs yeah, put into this. Yeah, I think yeah, I yeah, put very good. Starting with getting us in training. Um, that was a year ago already. Yeah, that was that's cool. right. This year it was. Yeah, in February. Opening hotel month. That's right. Uh, the other only other point is rules and procedures. I think we talked about that late last year as well. That was included in your packet. Um, you know, you're welcome to go ahead and look at that document. Uh, 
Mr. Brown, I thought maybe you wanted to address some points there. I mean, I, you know, we can take it any direction you want. I can't even remember what I did. And right, so, you know, we can keep that as a running item if you want. Um, but, you know, we can delve into the rules and procedures if you want to make it modifications or procedural things. Yeah, do we, do we should, we should uh, have the board approve it, though. It has it. been it has been approved. I mean, I think, oh, then I think 13 was last update, but I don't know if there was changes you wanted to make or the group the board wanted to make to that document. Since there are new faces and new thoughts, maybe I well, I gave you a red line version of what I thought we should put in the procedure. Yep, and that's been incorporated. It's not something that goes to the council. It's not something that goes to the public. It's straight here. Yeah. But we still need to vote on his red line changes, yeah. correct? So I, I can get those back out. I, did you? I'm not sure if you'd copied everybody or not. I mean, we can get that back out and put that on as an agenda item to discuss or vote on if you want. Let's do that. Okay. Then we've got. Then we can show that everybody is seen paper from. Okay. All right. I, I will work on that. Okay. That's all I have. We'll do it's much better. better. We have a motion yeah. made to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.